broadcast brought to you by WHOU and WFKT by Bowers Funeral Home, the County Federal Credit Union, TNT, Northern Maine Community College, Scoville Building Supply, FA Peabody, United Insurance, J. McLaughlin Construction, Daigle Oil Company, Priority Auto Sales, Rick Hannigan Plumbing, Cushman and Sons, KBHC, County Ag and Turf, Bolton Tire and Steelstone, Maine Equipment, Griffith Ford, Napa and Coastal Auto Parts, Pat's Pizza, Madigan Home Healthcare, Pioneer Times, Pioneer Broadband, Thompson and Hamill, Aroostook Limousines, Huber Engineer Woods, Jeans Electronics, County Physical Therapy, Katahdin Trust Company, White Smiles, Maine Baseball Academy, S.W. Collins, Nortrax, Herring Brothers. Now let's go down to the floor. Good evening basketball fans and welcome to Fort Kent Community High School. We are gonna have a good one this evening as we have a matchup between the Central Aroostook Panthers and the Fort Kent Warriors. These Central Aroostook boys are currently number one in Class C North going against the number three seed, the Fort Kent Warriors. Uh, this is Davis Sear alongside Dominic Resignal. Dom, we are going to have ourselves a good one this evening. We really are, Davis. This is a rivalry that's developed over the last few years. These are games that these two teams very much look forward to, uh, especially the case this year, meeting for the first time so, lot in, so late into the year, uh, 25 wins between the two already. So a lot of points up for grab here that could have some serious big implications for the standings at the end of the season. Definitely. This was a, a matchup two years ago in Bangor. Uh, so these teams definitely know each other. There's a history here. There's a rivalry here. And like we said, this is going to be a good one. For both teams, both coming off a win in their last games, Central Rustic won versus Southern Rustic. The score of 59 to 41 in their last matchup. They're coming in with a record of 12 and 3. Fort Kent also won. Their last game was last evening versus Madawaska. They won of a score of 72 to 49. The uh, score does not reflect the pace of that game last night. Both Dom and I were there. That was a closer one than the score sounds. Um, both teams are going to have a test with each other. It's going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that one last night in Madawaska, like you said, we were there. It was a six-point game late on in the third quarter. Uh, Fort Kent just kind of outmanned them. Uh, well, a few more bodies that they could turn to and gas them out a little bit. But uh, but they'll. Uh, you, you may think they're even looking forward to this one a little bit. Uh, Again, a lot more at stake for them here tonight. And I have to agree. And the size of Central Rustic will probably be a problem for Fort Kent. Uh, that has been their little Achilles heel this season so far. When a team has a big that they can score, it kind of causes a problem. And Central has that for sure in uh, Braden Bradbury here. He's, uh, he's a good player, a good big and uh, should have a, be a handful for the Warriors this evening. Yeah, 1,000 point score along with his twin sister. Don't know how many times that's happened where you get a couple twins with 1,000 points each, yeah. but two very talented athletes. I'd say siblings more likely, twins not very often, <laughs> for sure. So we are here, we're gonna take ourselves about a four and a half minute break. Uh, about four minutes, we're gonna get back to you here in the Jay McLaughlin Construction pregame show on the WHOU live stream with the coach's interview. So we'll get back to you in four minutes. Pioneer Fiber to the Home is now available in Holton, Sherman, Stacyville, Callis, and Baileyville. Streaming live events in high definition like high school basketball is best viewed with the most stable and fastest connections. Pioneer Broadband delivers state-of-the-art fiber directly into your home to handle all of your most demanding internet needs. Don't get left behind with slower technology. Get the fiber you need. Pioneer Broadband. Get a jump on your future by exploring your possibilities at Northern Maine Community College. 
the team of faculty and staff at NMCC will position you for a lifetime of success. With over 35 degree and certificate programs, including our newest offerings in water treatment technology, you will be amazed at how quickly your new skills will open a world of opportunity. Visit us online today at nmcc.edu. Northern Maine Community College, succeed here. At the Maine Baseball Academy, our top priority is to create an experience of advanced learning and skill development for all ages. The YMCA Indoor Turf Facility has many resources that we use to our advantage while developing young athletes. Our top tier coaching staff includes Director of Operations Ryan Lincoln and John Fry, Searsport District High School, Cody Collins, Bangor Christian Schools, and Cam Archer, Old Town High School. Follow us on Facebook at Maine Baseball Academy or call today for more information. County Ag and Turf Supply is at its new home on 7 Dow Siding Road in Caribou, offering the same great service. Randy and Jerry are working hard to supply the county with the best products. They offer Blue Seal Feed, Sentinel, Inspire, and Dynasty and Triple Crown for your equine. Home Fresh Extra Egg and Multi-Flock Pellets and Crumples and Mealworm for your poultry. Entrust Pet Food for your cat or dog. Minerals for your beef and dairy. They have feed for all your livestock. County Ag and Turf Supply also has wood pellets, lubricants, and of course, Willow the Blue Seal Rabbit on the premises. Stop by County Ag and Turf Supply today. MMG Insurance is a proud sponsor of high school basketball. Founded in 1897 and based in Presque Isle, MMG has independent insurance agents across Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. MMG has recently received a national award in innovation, was recognized as the Maine Company of the Year by the Maine Insurance Agents Association, and again named among the best places to work in Maine. Find out more about MMG by visiting our website, mmgins.com. MMG Insurance, protecting your piece of the world. This is Ben Adams from Priority Auto Sales. Listen, I know you've been seeing a lot of these orange plates around town lately, and trust me, I'm not just paying people to drive around in our vehicles all day. Every day we're selling cars, trucks, and SUVs. Why? It's simple. Discounted prices up front, great selection, and low pressure sales. We're simply not playing the games. We really are creating a new way to shop for a used vehicle. Check us out at yourpriorityauto.com and like us on Facebook. Priority Auto Sales, Route 1 in Holton. Madigan Healthcare Services provides a continuum of health care from skilled nursing facility, rehab therapy, to home health care. After five days in the hospital, they suggested that I come to the Madigan. The level of care, the service, the respect that they showed me, even the aftercare, everything about it was really excellent and I feel healthy. So the services that I've received at the Madigan have enabled me to get back to those things that I really love to do. We all know a Roostick County winter isn't much fun, but it can be with the right equipment. Holton Tire Company at 76 Myrna Street is your boss plow dealer and carries the king of snow, Aaron Snowblowers. Full service department with parts in stock. Steel Stone Industries in Holton is your location for gravel, salt, sand, paving, and plowing. Groundwork materials of all kinds and equipment to move it. We now offer heavy equipment and truck repair at our shop on 289 Station Road in New Limerick. Call Steel Stone Industries at 532-2675. Alrighty folks, we are back in Fort Kent. Again, we are gonna kick it over to Dominic Resignal for a coaches meeting with head coach Jason Woodworth of the number one Central Rustic Panthers. We apologize folks, you might not be hearing Dom at the moment. We are gonna work on getting that fixed. This year with them having graduated. Yeah, obviously Bem's a very big loss, uh, both on both ends of the floor. Uh, as far as scoring and ball handling, it's been kind of a by committee type thing. Really hasn't been one person. We got everybody back basically besides Ben. So I mean, we've been, had a lot of people here in this position before and uh, now it's just their turn to step up and they've done a very good job of that. Awesome. Uh, 
Well, our games are covered on WHOU and WFKT, so I'm sure you've had a chance to scout pretty well. What do you see out of these guys? Yeah, for sure. I mean, these guys are a hard-working group. Uh, they're, they're quick. I mean, they just don't give up. Their engine is just relentless. I mean, we know we're in for a 32-minute fight, and we're going to have to play a very good game to come out of here with a W. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck to you. All righty, folks, again, I'd just like to apologize for the technical difficulty missing some of that interview. We are good to go on technicals now, so we are going to get with Dom and Coach Chad Sear of the number three-seeded boys Class C North team, the Fort Kent Warriors. Dom, we are ready for you. Thanks, Davis. Now I'm here with Coach Chad Sear. Coach, guys pulled out a close one last night. The score may not have indicated close, but things did eventually turn in your favor. What was the difference between kind of the first three quarters and the last? Uh, I think uh, we did a little better job of running our half-court set, getting them to work a little harder on defense. Uh, we didn't expect what we saw when we went in there, and, and uh, come the second half, I think our boys came out ready to play. Good. Uh, with these guys, you know, this has been a very big rivalry the last few years. A lot of points always at stake when these two teams play, especially now so late on in the year. Uh, what do you know from them of having looked at them? Well, I know they like to take it into the paint uh, quite a bit. And I know Pryor gets on the boards really well. Um, Bradbury's, once he hits baseline, he's tough to stop going back to the basket. Um, and, and they're just a well-rounded team. They shoot well from the outside, they rebound well. So we're gonna have to box out, we're gonna have to guard paint, and we're gonna have to be able to take care of the ball against their three-quarter court and half-court pressure. Awesome, thanks a lot and good luck to you, man. All righty, thank you, Dom, thank you, Coach. As always, folks, this was the Jay McLaughlin Construction pregame show. We'd like to thank all our sponsors. We also have Napa Auto Parts providing with the scoreboard updates for this game. And as always, our injury report is brought to you by County Physical Therapy. Whether you want to get back to sports, back to work, or simply back to living your life, County Physical Therapy can help. Visit one of their five convenient locations online or at countypt.com to learn how CPT can help you. These starting lineups are always brought to you by the County Federal Credit Union. We are going to kick it over to our PA announcer, Scott Sivany, very soon as we're getting ready for our starting lineups. Again, this was the Jay McLaughlin Construction pregame show. We want to thank you to all our sponsors and all you loyal fans listening and watching the WHOU live stream. basketball fans and welcome to Fort Kent Community High School for tonight's game between the visiting Panthers of Central Aroostook Junior Senior High School of Mons Hill and your Fort Kent Community High School Warriors. <laughs> basketball fans, we have a very special recognition to make before the player introductions for tonight's game. On Saturday, senior captain number four, Jace Rochelleau, needed four points to score the 1,000 points of his high school career in a game played at Southern Aroostook Community School in Diabrook. <laughs> Jace scored the four points early in the game, and he went on to lead all scorers with a total of 45 points in the boys' 68-55 win over Southern Aristic. At this time, I would, call, I would like to call senior captain Jace Rochelleau, his parents, Jessica and Jay Rochelleau, his family, head coach Chad Sear, and assistant coach Larry Murphy to the center court area to present Saturday's game ball to Jace. Jace, stay right, Jace, stay right there. I would now ask that Jace's teammates meet him at center court to congratulate him on this milestone.
Fort Kent Community High School in MSAD number 27. Congra congratulate Chase on this outstanding achievement. Go Warriors! The Maine Principals Association at Fort Kent Community High School remind you to practice good sportsmanship during this sporting event. Cheer for all the players, respect the opposing team, accept the decision of the officials, be proud of your high school athlete. Please do not boo, taunt, or degrade anyone or any part of this contest. We would also like to remind everyone that Fort Kent Community High School is a tobacco-free campus. We thank you for your cooperation, and we thank you for your support of our high school athletes. Here are tonight's starting lineups for the visiting Panthers of Central Aristic, coached by Mr. Jason Woodworth, assistant coach Mr. Carl Mullen, at guard at junior number two, Josh Haynes. At forward, a senior number 24, Captain Ethan Pryor. At forward, a senior number 14, Captain Braden Bradbury. At forward, a senior number 20, Captain Jacob Carvel. And at forward for the Panthers, a senior number 44, Peyton Kingsbury. And now, for your four Kent Community High School Warriors, coached by Mr. Chad Sear, assistant coach Mr. Larry Murphy. At forward, a sophomore, number 24, Evan Deshane. At forward, another sophomore, number 25, Austin Delisle. At guard, a senior, number 14, Stephen Pierce. At guard, a senior, number 15, your captain, Eden Parody. And at guard, a senior, the newest member of the 1,000 Point Club, here at Community High School, number four, your captain, Chase Rochelle. The managers for your 4K Warriors are senior, Aiden Sirwa, and sophomore, Emily Fournier. Before I introduce the officials for tonight's game, uh, this week has been designated by the International Association of Approved Basketball Officials as Officials versus Cancer Week. Please notice our officials are using a pink whistle rather than the standard black whistle. This color represents the cause of fighting cancer. Cancer touches many of us, and our officials are promoting the need for all of us to continue to raise funds for this very worthy cause. This week, officials throughout the state of Maine are donating a portion of their game fees to support this cause. Please consider doing likewise. The officials for tonight's contest are Mr. Joe Klukey, Mr. Dan Girardin, and Mr. Pedro Rodriguez. Please stand and remove your hat as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
Alrighty, folks, once again, that was the Jay McLaughlin Construction pregame show and the starting lineups brought to you by County Federal Credit Union. One more time, running through the lineups for this game for the visiting Panthers, we have Bradbury, Carvel, Kingsbury, Pryor, and Thomas. For the home Warriors, we have Rushalo, Pierce, Parody, DeShane, and Delisle. And this game's referees are Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Kluke, and Mr. Gerardin. The Panthers win the opening tip and they have the ball up on half. Warriors come out in man-to-man -man defense. Drive to the middle is stolen by Pierce. A quick outlet up to Rushlow. He loses control of it, but Warriors do remain with the possession. Yeah, I noticed in the half court back here that had parity on uh, Bradbury. That'll be a big matchup to watch, see if that's who they're actually assigned to him or if he just kind of ended up there. But Rushlow, quick three. Goes in, first basket of the game is an early three from Jace Rushlow. Yeah, now they got Pierce on him. That's a little, a little better bit better matchup. of a matchup. Yep. Not that parity can't defend, just size wise. Absolutely. Kingsbury with the ball now. He drives baseline. Skip pass over to Thomas. Thomas is going to take a three in response. It rims out. Rushlow with the rebound. He's going to take it the other way. To not give up the quick outlet pass, keeps it himself. He's being guarded in Matt C by Pryor. He's going to have a tough matchup today trying to stop Rushlo. Inside to DeShane. He drops steps towards the middle, puts it up, and gets fouled. Yeah, well done there by DeShane. Uh, I noticed the game last night he got called for, geez, five or six travels in that initial post move. So he was, you should really see a concerted effort to put it down before he goes anywhere and drew a foul. Absolutely. That foul was on Jacob Carvel, his first and first for both teams. DeShane's first from the line is good. First point of the game is for the Warriors. Second is no good. Pierce with the rebound. He puts it up. Strong finish there from Pierce. Real strong, finished that with the left hand, even though that was the side that was in to the defender, but still finished through the contact. Pryor with the quick three in response. Score of six to three in the early parts of this game. He's had real good games here in the past. They're not gonna wanna let him get going too much. Delisle drives middle, puts a floater in, he gets his to fall. Both teams with a high shooting percentage to start this game. This I feel, has a feeling of a game with a lot of offense in it. Probably going to be very high scoring if I had to guess. I hope that scoreboard goes above 99. Carvel kicks it to Thomas, who kicked it to Kingsbury. He drives a trap, able to avoid it. Pryor now drives to the middle to Thomas. Bradbury is going to take the three and make the three. Delisle is going to bring it up now. Ball in the hands of Pierce. He drives to his left. He got fouled there, and Ooh. we'll get two from the line. Got the NBA continuation there. That foul is on Hayden Kingsbury, his first for the game. Very veteran squad on the court right now for Central Rustic. Four seniors and one junior. The first one by Pierce does not fall. Second one is good. Pressure now shown by the Warriors. Ball in the hands of Bradbury. He's going to take it up. Outlet pass to Kingsbury. Was tipped. Last touch by Kingsbury. Yeah, Shane got just enough of that to throw off the catch of the of the man there and got the double deflection. Delisle going to bring it up now, being guarded by Bradbury. Rushlow with it. The top on the 45 degree mark. He drives, meets some traffic. Able to kick to Delisle. He drove baseline. There's going to be some contact there. Looks like the refs are going to call this one pretty tight. A very veteran crew that we have here. Yeah, that's going to be Carvel's second. See him on the bench for the rest of the quarter, you presume. We're going to have... Stetson Nicholas check into the game for Carvel. Another junior, and like we said, a very veteran crew. 
for Central Aristic. Yeah, looking at the roster, I think they don't even have a single freshman on the roster. A lot of juniors and seniors with they some sophomores sprinkled in. Let's see what this call is. It is an uh, offensive foul, charge drawn there by Parity. Yeah, well done. Something Parity does, Parity does very well is take the charge. He's usually there, not moving his feet or undercutting anybody. He'll tell you he's always there. He just doesn't always yeah. get the call. <laughs> Very true. I feel like most people would say that. <laughs> Skip pass over to Rushlow. He fakes the three, drives baseline, kicks it up to Parity, inside to DeShane, out to Delisle. Good ball movement there from the Warriors. Delisle's going to drive and get the two. Very nice drive there. Warriors coming out with pressure again. Staying in the man-to-man -man defense here. Pierce on Bradbury, kicked out to Thomas. Trap was coming, stolen by the Warriors. Thomas steals it back. Prior now to Bradbury. He's going to drive versus Pierce. Good defense there. Yeah, they're going to really try forcing him left. A deep three from Thomas off the mark. It hit off the top of the backboard. That is going to be an out of bounds. Warriors going to bring it up here. They're going to switch to the hands of Rushlow. They're going to run a set piece here. See what we're going to get off of this set piece. Kick ball there. It looked like they were trying to hit Pierce posting up in the post. Yeah, trying to have Delisle set him across screen, get him come get a look on the post. Mounted now to Rushlow in the corner. Able to Pierce. Kicks it to Delisle for the three. Off the glass and in. I hear if he calls bank on that, it's worth four points. That's that's the rumor I heard, <laughs> but we'll keep with three for now. Yeah, because I definitely don't think he called it, so. Kingsbury with it now. Up to Nicholas, straight on three off the bench. Does not fall. Kingsbury fighting for the rebound. Ball in the hands of Pierce. Quick outlet to Delisle. He had Rushlow open down the court. We're going to kick to DeShane. That's his shot, that mid-range jumper. Something he hits consistently. Bradbury now pops it from the wing. Parity with the rebound. Back and forth action here. Warriors have it now. Parity drives on Thomas. Parity gets the two. Warriors looking to drive here early. A lot of back and forth action here, just what we like. Makes this a fun game to call when you're watching when it's back and forth action. Kicked inside to Pryor. He puts it up. He gets the basket. He gets the foul. We're going to have an and one situation here. That is the first foul on the Warriors. And it is on Austin Delisle, his first of the game. Pryor is going to put the and one up and capitalizes. Parity bringing it up now. We have a score of 16 to 8 here in the first quarter. Excuse me, 16 to 9. Rushlow with the jumper at the elbow. And might have a push there on Pierce, I believe is the call from Mr. Rodriguez. Yeah, I think they got him for a little bit of a hip check slash box out. It might have just been a case of being a little stronger on that one, but getting penalized for it. I feel like most coaches are all right with the box out foul, though. Yeah. If you're going to get a foul, one for boxing out pretty hard is not a bad one to nope. get. Thomas with it now. 45 wing, kicks it to Brad right at the top of the key. He drives. Pierce is there to stop the drive. Pryor with it alone up top. He's going to put it up off the front of the rim. Thomas there to put it back up for the two. Followed the shot there. Nice athletic play. And we're going to have a drive and a charge by Parity. A little payback there for Thomas. Yeah, he did. A lot of people probably thinking he didn't have his feet set, but that doesn't mean you can just run through him. And he was definitely in good position and in front. Maybe a taste of your own medicine kind of situation there mm -hmm. for Parity. Both guys will have to be a little bit smarter. Both very crafty defenders. They're going to be looking to take that charge. And probably both going to be doing a lot of ball handling, so they'll have opportunities. Almost stolen there by Rushlow, trying to read the pass lane. He did not come up with it. It was a shot from Thomas off the mark. Rebound from DeShane. The Warriors are going to take it the other way. 
Rushlow being guarded by Pryor. He crosses over, takes it up for two. Very nice play. He got Pryor up in the air, stayed patient with it, and got the basket. Yeah, those help side defenders are not going to be able to stay so glued to their men in the opposite corners because if you isolate everyone one on one, they're going to go by all day. We're going to have a double foul here called by Mr. Kluke. Bradbury and Pierce were both battling on the post, and that's going to be Pierce's second. So he's going to come off the court here in just a second. Yeah, they've been doing that for about uh, five minutes and 55 seconds. They've been battling. Finally, just went a little over the line, and good job by Mr. Kluke cleaning it up and letting them know that we're going to keep it a little cleaner in that tonight. DeShane is going to mark up with Bradbury now as Pierce goes to the bench. Colin Bennett checked into the game for the Warriors. Bradbury with it up top. He's going to put a deep three on and it does not go in. Quick outlet now for the Warriors. Rushlow kicks to Bennett in the corner. He's going to take the corner three. He's going to almost make the corner three. Thought he might have had a shooter's bounce there, but did not. And we have ourselves a timeout here called by the Panthers. A full timeout. We are going to take a minute break and get back to you here on WHOU. Don't get flush traded. Get Rick Hannigan Plumbing and Heating to handle all your pipes. Master Plumber Rick is ready to get your pipes back in action. Give Rick a call today at 538-7131 and like him on Facebook. Scoville Building Supplies may be a little store, but it's a whole lot more. You can find most anything you need at Scoville Building Supplies. Plumbing, painting, lumber, windows or doors. Everything you will need for your construction, remodeling, updating or building. Call Scoville Building Supplies today at 425-3192. Hello, this is Tony Bowers at Bowers Funeral. And we want to wish good luck to all area basketball teams, boys and girls, as you strive for the gold ball at the end of the season. We are proud to be a part of your communities and our family serving your family since 1900. Good luck, play hard, and above all, be good sportsmen. We are back in action here. After the timeout taken by the Central Rustic Panthers, Bradbury's going to drive to the middle, put a floater up, gets his own rebound, kicks it out to Nicholas. Guarded by two there, Thomas up top. Kick out to Bradbury, he puts up the three from the wing. Central again with the offensive rebound. This time it is a pass through the hands of Pryor. Warriors with it. A nice inside cut there by Delisle. Rushlow found him. And a quick two for the Warriors. We have a score of 20 to 11 here in the first quarter. About a minute five left on the clock. Pryor with it up top. Yeah, Forecast is going five out, really spreading them out. And Marcel not really doing a great job of that help side man discipline and clogging up the paint, giving them a lot of room to drive and attack the basket. I think the the Panthers might have scouted the shooters of the Warriors and are sticking on him. We had a drive there, I believe, by Nicholas. I got the same thing. Kick swing over to Parity at the top of the key. Warriors possibly looking for the last shot of the first quarter. We have 30 seconds left on the clock. Inside is a back cut by Bennett. DeShane found him. It is a miss and a rebound by Kingsbury. Nicholas now kicks it up to Bradbury. Now the Panthers will be looking for the last shot of the quarter. Bradbury drives, draws two, and got fouled. He'll get himself some shots from the line. Yeah, Kingsbury came up and gave him that screen. I think they got a better matchup they wanted and able to attack the basket and draw the contact. Bradbury's first is in. Second shot is off the front rim. Kingsbury with the rebound. Kicks it out to Nicholas. He kicks it out to Kingsbury. He gets it three. Reward the guy for getting the offensive rebound. 
Yeah, that was a big swing there at the end of the quarter. Delisle tried to put up the last second shot, did travel. We have .1 on the clock, not enough time to get a shot off unless you're throwing it at the rim and maybe get a tip, but even then, that's a not enough time. Nicholas is gonna try regardless. That is our score at the end of the first quarter, 20 to 17 for Kent over Central Aroostook. Folks, we are starting off the second quarter. Warriors have possession. Quick three from Russell at the top of the key. Off the mark. Rebound by Pryor. Kicking it up to Nicholas. He's going to take it up. Warriors showing him maybe a little bit of a zone defense there. Pryor snuck through and got a floater in the middle of the key. Yeah, first 1-3-1 first one, one look there for uh, by Fort Kent. But boy, did not take them by surprise. They got a layup out of it real quick. Absolutely. Then there was an outlet pass over to DeShane, who took a couple steps, tried to get someone up in the air to finish the shot, but got the travel call instead. Bradbury's going to take a three from the corner off the mark there prior with the offensive rebound. Thomas takes it baseline, does not get the basket. Rebound for DeShane. Rush low with it now, crosses over, kicks to Bennett in the corner. He passes up the three, swings to Delisle. Delisle driving on Thomas, kicks to DeShane. Off the front of the rim, Bradbury's going to take it the other way. He drives, kicks it to Nicholas in the corner. Off the mark with his three, Bradbury with the rebound. He's going to get fouled. Yeah, you got to box him out a little better than that. If it's, if it's anything near a 50-50, he's going to go up and win that one most times. We're going to have Ethan Bully check into the game as Delisle picked up his second foul. Warriors now have six fouls for the first half. Central Rustic has five. Pryor kicks it to Bradbury, finds Nicholas in the corner. Pryor with it now. Good ball movement there from Central. Bradbury did get fouled again. He cut to the middle of the basket. They found him, and he got the foul. Well, maybe Parody's second as well. See if they give it. No, they got uh, Colin Bennett with it, just his first. Oh, correction, they got that as his second. I missed one. Bradbury's first goes in. Steven Pierce going to check back into the game, possibly trying to slow down Bradbury. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the best matchup for him they have. Bradbury's starting to pick up momentum here, and it could be a long game for the Warriors if this guy gets going. His second is in, capitalizing on both this time from the line. Now Central coming out with some pressure, an extended 1-3-1 one, one zone trapping press. Bradbury now three from the wing off the mark. Kingsbury gets it. He's going to get a foul. Warriors got to be careful here. They're drawing fouls like it's their job right now, and unfortunately that's not their job. Yeah, I right? think it's already their eight, so one more, and they'll be in double bonus for we're only a minute and a half here into the second. So That can make for a long quarter being in double bonus. Kingsbury makes it first from the line. Second one is off. The Shane with the rebound. This strong play by Central and capitalizing on the free throws. They have now taken the lead. They are up 22 to 20 on the Warriors. Parody's going to find himself at the line now. I think they're going to get Thomas with his second. We're going to have 
Lucas Haynes checking into the game here. Most likely for Thomas, who's going to have a seat with two fouls. Parody makes his first. And makes his second as well. Warriors coming out with some more pressure. They're going to man back up here. Parody working on... Nicholas kicks to Kingsbury, who's got the Shane on him. He jab steps right, goes left, hits Pryor in the corner. Cut by Nicholas to the basket, misses, gets his own rebound, puts it up. That is a miss as well. Parody with it now. Got a couple good looks there. Yeah, Forkins, fortunate to get away with giving up two, three shots and not giving up a bucket. Nobody picked up Parody as he drove middle, misses the free throw jumper. Bradbury now goes against Pierce, some contact, no foul there. Kicks to Nicholas, swing pass to Haynes. Kingsbury now with it. Back to Bradbury, who drops it to Haynes. Kicks out to Kingsbury. Ball movement here on the left side of the court for the Panthers. Barry, excuse me, Bradbury goes up. Gets his own miss, puts it back up. Off the mark there. Quick outlet pass to Parity. Finds the Shane cutting through, and it's a miss. Couple of missed layups here from both teams. In a game like this, you have to capitalize on those opportunities. The student section here getting into it. Pryor kicks it to Kingsbury. Jumper from the side, in and out. Rebound by Rush, though. He's going to take it the other way. Going to take it himself and picks up the charge. Kingsbury very smartly playing at his feet. Took the hit, fell straight back. Yeah, another one of those where he may not have been totally stationary, but I do think he beat uh, Rochelo to, to that particular spot and again can't just run through him. We have us a tie score here at 22 points 450 left in the second quarter Haynes with it now being guarded by Rushlow. Rush the Warriors staying in man to man they had showed the 1 3 1 zone but Central picked it apart a little bit so they're going to have to man up the miss there by Pryor inside the key A foul on Rushlow was his second as well, so now Forkin has four starters with two fouls apiece. Correction, Colin Bennett, not a starter, six man. Pierce drives middle, kicks out to DeShane, who hits the elbow jumper. That is his shot. Yeah, that's his look right there. You get him those, he'll hit those at about a 70% clip for you. Pryor has it now, being guarded by Bully. Haynes with it now. They're trying to find Bradbury. Looks like Kingsbury is going to take the top three from the top of the key. Hits the shot. We have ourselves a 30-second timeout here called by Central. We'll get take a 30-second break and get back to you. Tired of the same old boring meals? Try something new this week. TNT Takeout at 69 High Street in Holton has what you're looking for. And believe me, the name doesn't lie. The food is dynamite. Every pizza is loaded with lots of gooey cheese and delicious toppings. From traditional pepperoni to barbecue chicken combination to vegetarian pizza or all meat. You can grab their specials or enjoy salads to food off the grill, Mexican seafood, and hot or cold subs. TNT Takeout, the convenience store that has it all. Call 521-5250. Back in action after the centralistic timeout. Central showing pressure again. Yeah, they've been kind of on and off with it. Not surprised to see them switch to it coming out of a timeout. Bully passes up the shot from the corner, kicks it to Pierce up top. He's going to take the three. He's going to make the three. Warriors going to take the lead back. He's still hot from last night. I think he hit his first three or four over in Madawaska. He's working against Bradbury now. Kicks to Haynes, who's got Rushlow on him. Kingsbury up top. He made his last three. He's going to drive. Hang time there. Does not get it to fall. Rushlow going to take it the other way. Kicks it to Parity in the corner. Parity with the corner three. Doesn't get it to fall. That would have been a big one. Pryor instead is going to take it up for Central. Kicks it to Nicholas, who's being guarded by Parity. 
Austin Delisle is going to check back into the game here for the Warriors and put their starting five back in the lineup. I'd have to guess. Kingsbury kicks out to Bradbury. Bradbury drives baseline, trapped from the Warriors, kicks it out to Kingsbury. He takes the three. He makes the three. Man, what's he hesitating for? That's pure. He has been a hot hand and a big offensive spark for the, the Panthers in this second quarter. Rushlow drives, kicks the Pierce. Pierce passes it up, kicks the bully. Swing across court to Rushlow. That five out offense for the Warriors. That is why Central is respecting their three point shots there. The Shane with it now. Yeah, you can see the weak side defenders clogging up the paint a lot better. No more ISO one on one drive for a layup. Now they got two dedicated to Rushlow. Are we possibly seeing a zone defense here? Maybe a 3 2? Big time three there. I don't know, but I know that that's a 3 2. Yeah. That we do know. And a travel call there. The fans getting into it. Big swing of events for the Warriors there. Up 30 to 28. 159 left in the second quarter. Lyle back in for the first time since getting his foul, his second. Central looking to trap here in the corners. Yeah, this does appear to be a 1-3-1 one, one half court trapping corners, like you said. Kicked out to Delisle in the corner. Perry yeah. now up top. Rushlow drives off the mark with his layup. That was a nice drive, snuck through some defenders. Quick outlet pass to Pryor. He's got Delisle on him. Missed there by Pryor. Good job by Delisle not picking up his third foul. Parity able to maintain control. Blocked by Bradbury. And possession is for the Warriors. Yeah, just enough traffic there down. Try to put that down with some, some, some scrappy hands around, knocked it off of his own chin. 2-3 zone shown from the inbounds pass from the Panthers. Not uncommon for out of bounds underneath. Pryor is picking up rush low. Kick violation there. Good thing, he would have been off to the races. Yeah. <laughs> the Warriors are gonna inbound here in front of the Panthers bench. And it's a deflected pass. Sometimes a tip pass is as good as a steal. Yeah, those corners can be tough to inbound from, so. Pierce with it. Kingsbury defending the inbound pass. Swings to Delisle. To DeShane. DeShane tried to do that give and go pass from Delisle. Threw it away. Nicholas missed there. He had a transition layup that did not fall for him. Swing to rush low now. He's going to maintain control. We got less than a minute left in this second quarter. Things have certainly slowed down here. I think Fort Kent was at 20 after one and only having scored half of that this quarter. Pierce took too many steps as he drove left. The fans didn't like it, but I saw what Mr. Kluke saw. Yeah, I think so. I think he had ended his dribble just before or just after, rather, took picking that, up that pivot. Took that NBA third step yeah. that uh, maybe some fans are used to seeing in yeah. the NBA, but here in Arista County, you're going to get that travel called. And Correctly so. I mean, <laughs> my, my thoughts exactly. <laughs> Kingsbury now drives us to DeShane. A very nice up and under move from Kingsbury. He's been big for the Panthers here in this second quarter as they tied up at 30. Yeah, really nice move. A lot of people want to travel on that one too, but it's it, it, you cover a lot of ground without a dribble, but it's really not. You can lift your pivot foot to shoot and pass, and that's what that was. That's an old school post move, that up and under. You don't see too many post moves anymore, but nope. when you do, they look pretty good. Scuffle underneath, and Delisle's going to pick up his third foul. Yeah, you kind of saw that one coming. He thought yeah. he got hit on probably the yeah. first two shots, and then frustration yeah. kind of took over and Absolutely. wasn't leaving the scene of that one without either a ball or a foul. Yep. And unfortunately, that's at the opposite end of the basket. So we're going to have a double bonus foul. So Pryor's going to shoot two off of that foul. Again, that is his third. 
tenth yeah. team or over ten fouls now. Excuse that one, me. that one really hurts with only four tenths of a second left in the half. Just back up and let him chuck it. He probably wouldn't have even had time to get it off. He misses the first. The second one is in. We have a score of 31 34 tenths of a second off of the clock. Rushlow put it up. Alrighty, folks, we are at halftime here in Fort Kent. We are going to take a three minute break and we'll get back to you in action in three minutes. Hi from Jeans, where you'll find better TV and more ways to enjoy it. Get 190 channels for $59.99 a month with Dish. Plus, get a free voice remote on us. And remember, we're also trained Nest Pros and deliver white glove service for all kinds of smart home solutions. Like the Google Nest Learning Thermostat. Or the Google Nest Cam Outdoor, which lets you look after your home from anywhere so you can travel worry-free. So come and visit our newest location on Stillwater in Bangor. Or visit us online to find a local store near you. We all know that fresh new paint can quickly transform the look and feel of your home. Our trained staff can help you select the best paint and color for your mood and budget with our new Color Journeys color matching system. Best look paint and primer in one. It's easier than ever to do it yourself and it means less time and money spent on the project. Make your personal color statement and go where the builders go for quality do it best paint at the best price. The SW Collins Company in Caribou, Presque Isle, Holton, Lincoln and Fort Kent. Excellence at ground level is what you get with Jay McLaughlin Construction in Holton. Founded in 2012, the company plans the construction of streets, residential areas, and commercial buildings, and they are involved in both public and private projects. Their high quality work and many years of experience have earned them an excellent reputation and a loyal client base. Regardless of whether you need a detailed plan for a building or would like to build a road, Jay McLaughlin Construction is your reliable partner for all your engineering needs. Call Jay McLaughlin Construction at 532-6335 or 694-2546. Aroostook Limousines and Ace Rent-A-Car get you there in style. Aroostook Limousines has 8 and 12 passenger limousines and a 20 passenger party bus for evenings out, proms, weddings, birthdays, concerts, whatever the celebration. Travel anywhere in state and Ace Rent-A-Car specializes in insurance rentals and has locations in Presque Isle, Holton and Patton at Savage Paint and Body. Ace offers everything from compact cars to vans. Ace Rent-A-Car, we do it right and we make it easy. Reach both businesses at 768-7368. The County .me, your source for countywide sports, including scores and highlights from the Greater Holton, Presque Isle, and Caribou regions. We also are the source for all the latest daily news and community happenings for readers of the Holton Pioneer Times, the Star Herald, and the Aroostook Republican and News coverage area. Visit us now on the web at thecounty.me. Accidents to building damage. Owning your own restaurant comes with a lot of liabilities. Among drivers, vehicles, and business property, there's a lot of exposure. If our equipment fails, we know United Insurance has us covered. For us, finding the right words for marketing campaigns is simple. Finding the right insurance is not. That's why it's nice to know United Insurance has us covered. United Insurance has us covered. United Insurance has us covered. The United Insurance has us covered. United, United Insurance, Insurance has, has us covered. covered. folks we are here at okay Half so Time. I am here with the matriarch of the Bradbury family mother of as far as I know only thousand point scoring twins uh, man what was life like growing up with these two obvious competitors were they at each other's throats or are they more encouraging to each other oh they're definitely more encouraging to each other they are two peas in a pod best friends they're the type that I guess what one's lacking in is the other one's strength and they use that to make a better, better each other. Like they, they truly are uh, each other's best buddies. Sure, parenting had a lot to do with that. Uh, 
Now, I was there, actually, and uh, the Central Aristic Panthers are your reigning def uh, defending soccer, Class D in soccer, I believe, right? Yeah. Class D in soccer, state champions, uh, came back from a one nothing deficit where I think they were getting outpossessed, like 80 to 20, but uh, did not quit. Uh, what was that run like for that team? Uh, and what was that? What has it been like in the community? Kind of what has thought of as traditionally a basketball town, but uh, experienced success in soccer as well. Oh, it has been nothing but fun for the kids. They like, like you said, we started that game, and I sat there on the bench. And I thought, who? What have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> and uh, and they fall back, and that's um, pretty characteristic of that group of boys that they dig deep and and they're a pretty tight uh, knit group. But they've, they've definitely enjoyed the rewards of being champions in the town. Excellent. Well, hey, I won't take up too much of your time. Thank you very much for it, and we'll look forward to the second half. All righty. Thank you to Dom. Again, this is the Katahdin Trust Halftime Show. Uh, we're going to take another minute break because we have a pep band going on here in Fort Kent. So we're going to jump back in about three more minutes, three minute break, and we'll get back to you right here in Fort Kent on WHOU. Nortrax is your John Deere construction and forestry equipment dealer for the entire state of Maine. We stand ready to serve all your new and used heavy equipment needs. Count on Nortrax for 24-hour parts and service support and around-the-clock machine monitoring with JD Link. Our certified technicians and parts specialists alongside our product support technology reps are here to serve you. We stand ready as your John Deere construction and forestry equipment team in Maine. Sorry, Dad. Sure, you could get him a new car. Sorry. You could also light a pile of money on fire. Sorry. Because as long as Mr. It Wasn't My Fault takes the wheel on occasion, maintaining this car is your best option. So keep it running longer, stronger, Sorry. with quality parts and a whole lot of Napa know-how. Nortrax is your John Deere construction and forestry equipment dealer for the entire state of Maine. Whether you're working hard in the woods or digging in the dirt, Nortrax has the new and used heavy equipment you need. Count on Nortrax for 24-hour parts and service support, plus around-the-clock machine monitoring with JD Link. Our service technicians, parts specialists, and product support technology reps are here to serve you. We stand ready as your John Deere construction and forestry equipment team in Maine. Aroostook County winter isn't much fun, but it can be with the right equipment. Holden Tire Company at 76 Marina Street is your boss plow dealer and carries the King of Snow Aaron Snowblowers, full service department with parts in stock. Steelstone Industries in Holton is your location for gravel, salt, sand, paving, and plowing. Groundwork materials of all kinds and equipment to move it. Steelstone Industries is your aggregate supplier. You can visit Steelstone Industries at 154 Steelstone Street in Holton. Want that special item for this year's high school basketball season to show your team support? Cushman & Sons, locally owned and operated in Presque Isle, has team sportswear and will do custom embroidery, screen printing, logo design, digital and printing, as well as banners, decals, and other vinyl works. Cushman & Sons also can design trophies, awards, and add specialty items. Cushman & Sons, 764-3833 or CushmanAndSonsInc.com. And don't forget to visit and like their Facebook page. If you can think it, Cushman & Sons will say, yeah, we can do that. Out here, builders choose Advantech products to provide a durable base that helps prevent bouncing and warping. So in here, you can enjoy the beauty of luxurious finished floors without worrying about pops, squeaks, or creaks. Because out here, and in here, there's no better sound than the peace and quiet that comes from Advantech products. The flat-out best for a quiet, stiff floor. All right, folks, again, this is the Katahdin Trust Halftime Show. Uh, we're back in Fort Kent. Dom, can you give us some first half stats, please? Yeah, for the visiting and leading Central, Past Central Aristook Panthers, we got Josh Thomas with two, Stetson Nicholas with two off the bench, Braden Bad Bradbury held to six, Ethan Pryor, uh, no stranger to playing well here, with nine, and Kate Hayden Kingsbury leading them with ten. 
for the home Warriors. We have Jace Rochelot with five, Stephen Pierce with nine, Eden Parody with four, uh, Evan DeShane with three, and Austin Delisle with nine. And I'm going to throw it over to stat guy Jake Hebert, and he's going to give us some extras. Brad Barry had six rebounds, two assists, one steal, one block. Josh Thomas got one rebound, one assist, and two blocks. Two steals. And Ethan Pryor got three rebounds and two assists. And Hayden Kringleberry got three, four rebounds and one assist. Jay Specialo got four rebounds and one assist. Steven Pierce got two rebounds, three assists. And Evan DeShane got six rebounds. Perfect. Thank you, Jake. Again, that was Jake Hebert, the third member of our team and our always loyal statistician. Again, folks, we have a score of 31 Central Rustic, 30 for Kent. Very close match here. A lot of offense in the first quarter from both teams. Things slowed down in the second quarter for both teams. Back and forth, and I'd say Kingsbury kind of helped lead the charge for the Panthers in that second quarter, whereas a more balanced approach on offense for the Warriors. Yeah, he came out firing. Uh, I was surprised by him. I didn't. I don't know if he'd played in the past. I know that uh, I was the fourth official for their state championship game, and he had come over to report in, and I got to chat with him a little bit. And yeah, I thought he had mentioned to me that he he didn't play anything else. So he, he certainly looks like he's played basketball at least, because that shot is pretty. Well, there's a pretty good tradition with people with the last name of Kingsbury that are good at basketball. So True. If nothing else, it might be in the gene pool. Thomas with it now, kicks to Bradbury in the, in the post. He goes up and gets the two for our first points of the second half. Pierce is going to take it, dribbles behind the back, leaves his feet to pass. Luckily, it was deflected out by the Panthers. That's always a dangerous move to leave your feet. Yeah, you just identified the two things to do that I'd probably advise against, that big looping behind the back dribble, and then, like you said, leaving his feet to pass. Almost got caught in the air. There was fortunate that was only deflected out and not stolen. Well, the behind the back dribble looks pretty good. You and I, Don, were talking, watching the sub varsity game, and there's a couple players there trying to do some moves on some guys, and sometimes simple is better. Yeah, if you do a nice little quick one that's almost just basically a crossover behind your back, it can be okay, but it's when you get this big looping, sweeping behind the back that you can see coming from a mile away, and it takes almost a couple seconds to get back around. It's, it's pretty easy to, to read. Swing out to Thomas. He puts it up from the 45. He gets it to fall. Three-point basket there. Central with a 36-32 lead over the Warriors. Rushlow drives. He gets to the corner. Quicks to parity. Quick skip past the parity, I wanted to say. Parity misses basket. Drew his own foul. Drew his own. Well, I'm struggling here. Got his own rebound and drew the foul. Yeah, I got Thomas with the late one. I'm not sure he even needed to do it. It looked like uh, Bradbury had that rebound pretty well controlled. Off the inbounds pass, it was rush low in the corner. Pierce with it now. I think that was the behind the back dribble you were talking about, the quick move. Yeah, compared you're okay to the, with that. Yeah. Rush low is going to put it up from the wing. Miss Kingsbury with the rebound. Bradbury's going to take it up for Central. Thomas with another three. This time it doesn't fall. Bennett with the rebound. He's starting the second half instead of Delisle. Delisle did pick up his third foul at the end of that second quarter, as you remember. Yeah, that one hurt. Like we said, four tenths of a second left, about 85 feet from the basket that they're defending. Don't just don't need it. Rushla passed up the elbow jumper, kicks to Bennett in the corner. He passed up a corner three. Now it's with Pierce up top. He's going to drive, snuck through traffic, put it up, didn't get it to fall. Yeah, looks Kingsbury like leads the other way. Sorry, Dom. No, sorry to cut you off. It looks like they have Bradbury guarding Bennett and just really sagging off him and using him as a help defender. He's going to have to probably hit something to, to draw him out. Thomas there drove it to the basket. He got fouled by Bennett. Bennett's going to pick up his third foul, so now there's two Warriors in foul trouble. We'll see if Coach Sear goes to the bench to get his sixth player out here. It doesn't look like he's making a move. He's going to roll and gamble with Bennett. Thomas gets his free throw to fall. Parity's going to take the other way, being guarded by Thomas. Finds Rushlow in the corner. He puts it up from the corner, gets it to go. Big time three there from Rushlow. Yeah, and a really well executed play. Got that screen along the baseline and caught that with a lot of space to set his feet and drain it. 
Score of 38-35. As always, your scoreboard updates are brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Carvel, who sat for most of that first half, is now back out there. He got his first touch. Now he puts it up. And what do we got here? We got a uh, shooting foul. Parity picked that one up. Uh, I think they're actually going to got Bennett for the swat before the contact with Parity. If he had just let him go, it probably would have been a charge, but he's going to pick up his fourth on a swat. Carvel's first from the line goes in, and Coach Shear went to the bench. He's going to bring in Ethan Bully in for Bennett, who has four fouls. Yeah, he's not gonna he's not gonna want anyone else to get into foul trouble territory because normally in games that are this close he doesn't go much deeper than that onto his bench. Now Bennett and Delisle are two of the bigs, and I'm air quoting bigs even though the fans listening at home can't see me uh, there. So the Warriors are especially small now with two of their more bigger, or I don't even know if that's a word, but they're bigs on the bench with foul trouble. Pryor's going to inbound right in front of our table here. Kicks it to Bradbury. He's got Rushlow coming on him. Kicks it to Thomas. Pryor in the corner. Puts up a three. In and out. Panthers remain controlled. Bradbury puts it up. Doesn't get it to go. Parody's going to take it the other way. Yeah, Pryor's improved his shot a lot. I remember he's had some good games here, but usually from kind of crashing and back cutting and getting stuff around the basket, he looks very comfortable shooting from the perimeter. And that one, for unfortunate not to fall. Panthers quickly take it the other way. It was a two by Kingsbury off a heavy push or a quick push by Bradbury. Coach Chad's here, takes a timeout. We have ourselves a full timeout. We're going to take a minute break and get back to you here on WHOU. Be good for Nana, okay? A moment like this is decades in the making. The County Federal Credit Union, partnering with you to achieve financial success so you can enjoy the moments that matter. CountyFCU.org. White Smiles Family Dentistry realizes that life gets busy. We have locations in Presque Isle and Fort Fairfield to better accommodate your busy schedule. If you need to see a dentist but don't want to wait months for an appointment, then call White Smiles Family Dentistry. We are always accepting new patients and can accommodate you as quickly as possible. We offer the area's most complete dentistry, including implants, extractions, root canals, and implant retained dentures, which saves you from trips downstate or transfers to another dental office. Don't wait months to see your dentist. Call White Smiles Family Dentistry today. Warrior is going to inbound it after their quick timeout. Kick to Shane in the corner. He's got Carvel on him. Finds Parity. Pass to Delisle on the wing right in front of the Warriors bench. Now DeShane in the corner. Found Parity who did a cut. Got the two. Yeah, nice back cut and good finish over the outstretched arms of Kingsbury. Protects the basket well, but finished it over him. Rushlow going to take it the other way. Finds Pierce. He drives. Goes up there off the front of the rim. There were some trees there when he drove down the path, yeah, drowned King the lane. Kingsbury joined by the other Bury there, Bradbury, and that's a tall order to finish over those two. Bradbury drove baseline against DeShane, didn't get it to fall. It's going to remain central ball. Nicholas is going to check into the game for Thomas. And yeah, Bradbury thought he got fouled on that one, but I'll tell you what, he's initiating a lot of contact, putting his shoulder into the chest of those defenders, so I can see why he didn't get it. Kingsbury with it now. Nicholas drives it middle. Carvel out to Kingsbury. He takes a corner three, makes the corner three. This guy has been on fire. Yeah, I got that being his fourth three of the night. Parody going to take it the other way. He's got Rushlow now with the ball. Tried to find Pierce in the post. Able to maintain control of the Shane with it now up top. Back cut by Parity. Shane didn't see it. 
Deflected by Pryor. It's going to remain Warriors ball. Yeah, I think stagnating here in the half court just a little bit. Rushlow has it now in the corner. He drives baseline and gets the two. Nice take. Looked off the defender, drove baseline. No one home. Nope. Nicholas is now taking it up for the Panthers. Kicks it to Pryor. Off the fingertips of Nicholas, able to maintain control in Kingsbury. Delau comes up with the steal. We're going to have a carry call there. Fans wanted contact on the reach-in foul. We have a carry call instead. Yeah, he may think that the carry happened before the contact, kind of initiating the reach and kind of picked it up to get around it. Nicholas with it now working on parity in the hands of Pryor. He's got Rushel on him. Parity comes for the trap. Rushel gets the steal. He's going to take it by himself. Bradbury now with it. He's going to work on Pierce. Yeah, Rushlow's got nine this quarter. You don't want to let him get too hot. Kingsbury has it now being guarded by DeShane in the hands of Carvel, guarded by Delisle. Nicholas guarded by Parity. Bradbury able to maintain control. DeShane tries to read the passing lane. Bradbury drives the middle. He's going to pick, draw the foul. It's going to tag Pierce with his third now. So that's three Warriors with at least three. And Bradbury misses the first. Makes the second. We have a score of 46-41 in favor of Central Rustic here. Rushlow now has it. He puts up a three. Does not fall for him. I think there's a glitch in the matrix. I don't know if I've ever seen that. The air ball? Yeah, that yeah. one doesn't happen often. That does not. And we have a blocking foul there against, let's see here, might have been, yeah, Jace Rushlow with the blocking foul there. Bradbury's going to get two more from the line. That's another Warrior with three. Bradbury gets his first to fall. We have Ethan Bully checking into the game for Austin Delisle. Coach Shear's running, not, he's not sure who to protect at this point. Bradbury misses the second, big rebound there by Pierce. He's gonna take it up himself, quick push. He's possibly went coast to coast, kicked it to Rushlow instead. Now to Shane, nice bounce pass to Parity. He puts it up off the side of the rim, Bully with it. Missed the second chance opportunity. Bradbury's gonna take it the other way. And doesn't get hits the fall. DeShane with a big rebound there. I don't know if that was a rebound or a steal. I yeah. think, uh, who was it that was down there? Pryor might have yeah. beat him too, and he just ripped it out of his hands. Hybrid play, give him a stat for both. Yeah. A stolen rebound. Warriors get the ball back on the second chance opportunity here. DeShane has it now. He has Carvel guarding him. Carvel trying to pick up his or avoid getting his third foul. Spin move by Rushlow, gets it to go. Very pretty move. Very nice. You love to see that not call the travel. I know a lot of times most spin moves are just kind of by default call yep. travels, but I think he does a good yep. job at not ending that dribble before he puts that pivot foot down. Carvel takes a three from the top of the wing, doesn't get it to fall. Oh, sky rebound there. A lot of bodies hit the floor. Bradbury coming up a little bit lame. He's going to walk it off. I think he might have actually picked up the foul, too, in the box out. If he didn't get it, Kingsbury was about to because yeah. he came flying in and took yeah. out a couple bodies of his own. Now we have a timeout here. We have a 30-second timeout called in action. We'll get back to you in a 30-second break.
discussion going on here before the starter. Looks like we had a sub trying to get in the game that didn't check in, so Nicholas is going to come back out on the court after the timeout. Parity going to bring it up here. Kick to Delisle, who's back in the game, checked back in. Deshane with it now. He drives to the middle, kicks to Parity. He's got Bradbury on him. Pierce now, tried to go back door. Kingsbury read it, instead he gets it at the top of the key. Swing to Deshane. Yeah, they may be content to take the last one here, and as I say that. Pierce drove to the left. Gets the strong finish to go. We have a score of 47-45 here. 12 seconds left at the end of this third quarter. Oh, we got us a foul called. Bradbury gonna get the free throw opportunity. Foul on Evan DeShane there. Yeah, I think everyone and their grandmother literally disagreed with that one, thought it was a tie-up. <laughs> I say literally because I think I saw a few grandmothers pop up for that one. Bradbury put it up at the end of the quarter, didn't get it to fall. All right, folks, it's that time. We'll be back in a minute, WHOU. This is Neil, could I help you? You're aware? I'll be right there. What'd you guys do? Giving steals! Yeah. That's all you did? Yeah, yes! There's nothing wrong with that. I guess there is something wrong with giving away steals. Steal this 2016 CRV SC, now only $17,995. I don't know why. Mm. Good steals. For drivers from Patton to Bangor and everywhere in between, buying from Thornton Brothers is a rewarding experience. At Affordable Plumbing, we buy all our vans through Thornton Brothers. Not only do they have excellent customer service, but I'm treated like family when I walk through the door. Get a fresh start with great deals on select new 2019 and 2020 Ram trucks and vans during the Start Something New sales event. Thornton Brothers in Lincoln, your hometown dealer, wherever your hometown may be. Back in action in the fourth quarter. We got a close one here, like we predicted at the beginning of this game. We have a travel there from Bradbury off the collected rebound. We have a score of 47 Central Rustic, 45 Fort Kent. We knew this was going to be a battle of two strong, quick teams. Pierce from a big time corner from the three. As the Warriors take the lead here. I think that's his first even look from three since the first half. Someone who's probably shooting about 70% in the last two games. I'm going to get him a few more than that. Scuffle underneath. We're going to have a jump ball called. Central going to inbound underneath their own basket. Kick up to Bradbury up top. Finds Carvel in the corner. Kick out to Thomas. Thomas puts up the three off the mark. Rebound by Delisle. He's going to take it the other way. Outlet pass to Parity. Finds Rushlow in the corner. He passes up the three. Takes one dribble. Puts up the jumper. Gets it to go. Yeah, I like that a lot. He just missed the look from there. So he figured he wanted to get it a little closer, get a little more comfortable, get into more of a rhythm and drains it. Nice pressure defense there by Pierce. Bradbury able to maintain control of it. Finds Kingsbury in the corner. Skip pass, goes off the side of the backboard, loses control. It is going to be Warriors possession here. The Warriors came out of this third quarter with some quick baskets. Now they have taken the lead. We have a score of 50 to 47. 
Pressure now from the Panthers. Deshane yeah. in the corner. They've gone to an extended half court, one through one. Finds Rushlow. He hits it from the other corner, off the side of the rim. Rebound by Carvel. Pressure from the Warriors with the trap. Delau gets the steal. Body's hitting the floor here. And eventually, I knew we were going to have a jump ball. Instead, we have a timeout. Smart call there by Coach Steer. Oh, I don't think they're going to give it nope. to him. I think they gave it the jump. He said that uh, his player never had sole possession of it in the while he was trying to call it, so can't call a timeout without the ball. When in doubt, call the jump ball. That's what I've learned from the very minimal amounts of refing that I have done. And I do think that's correct. You saw uh, 20, uh, Carvel's arm just sneaking in there, even if he's just getting a fingertip on it. That is technically a tie-up, so I do think that's the correct call. Last touch there by Pierce is going to be Panthers' ball. Warriors going to stay in their pressure. Thomas with it now. Pryor's going to take it up by himself. They're electing to take Thomas and Bradbury out of the equation. They're going to be happy with Pryor bringing the ball up. Kingsbury with it now. He drives to the left. Bradbury, quick swing to Thomas. Thomas drives middle and gets the two to go. Nice drive on the closeout there. Delisle has it now. That extended one through one out for the Central Aristic Panthers. Russell gets rid of it before the trap comes. The tip by Carvel. And we got a foul called by Carvel. A nice hustle play there by both players. Fortunately, the foul was given. Yeah, that's actually a really good call by Mr. Kluke, a veteran official. A lot of times you'll see a ball on the ground and it's just every man for himself. Uh, but just because there's a loose ball doesn't mean you can run through the back of someone or dive into them. Shane has it as the post. He drives the middle, puts it up. Bradbury was there on the help side D. Last touch by DeShane. Good help side defense there from Central. They might have learned from their mistakes in the first quarter where help side was non-existent. Now they are staying home. Yeah, that's, that adjustment has made all the difference in the world for them defensively. Pryor drives left, finds Kingsbury. Bradbury goes back door, runs into his own player. Travel is called. He seems to be limping a little bit. I don't know if he's still shook up from that uh, that rebound that he got crunched into by his own guy and actually picked up a foul on it, but he does not seem to be yeah. moving easily. Definitely not about to take himself out of this one, though. He's a warrior at heart. No pun intended. Poor yeah. Kent. Deshane within the corner now. Got to get rid of it before the trap comes. That's a dangerous place to pick up your dribble. Pierce now skips to Delisle. He has it at the top of the key. Kingsbury is going to pick him up as the head of that 1-3-1. One, one. Deshane able to maintain control. Last tip by Bradbury. Got his fingertips in the passing lane. Warriors are going to inbound underneath their own basket. Speaking back to Squiggly Bradbury's toughness, I'm sure a lot of you remember the matchup in Bangor that, geez, the game kind of shifted a lot when he picked up a knock that kind of split his eye open. And uh, I'm sure if it was legal to play while bleeding profusely out of your face, <laughs> he would have, but <laughs> fortunately he couldn't. And uh, that game went from being a close one to poor Kent running away with it at that point. So very much a game changer. Skips. Eventually finds his way to Pierce. He's going to drive in the middle. He's going to take it up. He's going to make it. He's going to get an and one. Nice, strong take there by Stephen Pierce. He can do that. He's a big, strong kid. Yeah, going to that comfortable left. You got to cut that off. He gets the and one to go from the line. The Warriors take a four point lead here in the fourth quarter. We got 450 left on the clock. Kingsbury with it in the corner. Out to Pryor. Finds Kingsbury. They're looking for Bradbury in the post. Nice defense there by the Warriors. Thomas is going to take a three from the top. Doesn't get it to fall. Battle for the rebound. Comes to the hands of Bradbury. He gets it up, but doesn't get it to fall. Fans wanted to travel. Yeah, that was a desperation chuck just before he did end up traveling very much off bounds. Rushlow has it in the corner. And Pryor's going to draw the foul. I think we're going to see a little bit of face guarding here, trying to get the ball out of the hands of Rushlow. Yeah, 
he had a big third quarter, but hasn't scored since. Delisle's going to drive it, puts it up, doesn't get it to fall. Thomas with the rebound. He's going to take it the other way. Quick push by Thomas, finds Carvel. He doesn't get his layup to fall. And Rushlow not able to maintain control. He loses it out of bounds. Panthers are going to inbound underneath their own basket. Yeah, Carvel might have gotten away with one on the rebounding action. They're reaching over the top. I forget who it was that initially had that rebound controlled, but. Skips to Pryor on the wing. He drives left, finds Bradbury in the corner. Bradbury's going to put it up off the side of the rim. Parody with the rebound. He's going to take it the other way. Anybody on the court right now can grab a rebound and go the other way. Oh, comfortable handling, moving the ball up. We have a timeout called by Coach Steer. He's going to take a, I believe, a 30-second. We're going to see the call from Mr. Kluge. 30-second timeout. We're going to take a quick break and get back to you here in WHOU. It's never too early to start planning for your future. Whether that means protecting your family with life insurance, college planning, or starting to save for retirement, I want to help you get started. Regardless of your age, it's important to start planning for your financial future now. And as you inch closer to retirement, it's important for you to protect your assets, your retirement income, and your family. Thompson Hamill has many tools available to help you chart your course on your financial roadmap. Thompson Hamill, LLC. Your family, your future. Warriors are going to inbound after the timeout. It's a skip pass to Rushlow. I think the fans wanted him to try and alley-oop that, but a smart play just to come down with it. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too hard of a pass there, past to where DeShane was, and, or not where he was going anyway. Panthers are going to take it the other way off the turnover. Yeah, Forkin's not going to want to get too conservative yet, but they are in a position where they at least don't have to take any bad shots. Kingsbury drives middle, puts it up, was going left, put it up with his right hand. Parody's going to end up with control of it. He's going to drive rush low. He's going to bring it the other way. Yeah, you see something good ball handlers do there. Is he had to beat his main baseline, but then as soon as he was by him, he got back middle to avoid being trapped in the corners. Fortunately, another missed catch there by Deshane, able to maintain control for the Warriors, as was Parody. He skips to Pierce. Pierce passes up the three, finds Parody for the three. Parody off the front of the rim. Thomas is going to grab the rebound. They've got numbers if they attack it. Thomas found Pryor. Pryor found Thomas. Unfortunately, Thomas does not get the rebound, the layup to go. Pierce is going to take it. Baseline throws it away. In his defense, Ben Searwell was open, and I've seen him <laughs> knock that one down a plenty. Warriors have turned over on a couple of possessions here. They're going to have to maintain control, stay strong here, because as the game clock winds down, the game's going to get a little more high pressure situation. Every mistake can't be made. Nice charge there, taken by Parody. Bradbury's driving baseline. Parody met him, took the hit, took the fall. Charge foul, player control yeah. on Braden Bradbury. Yeah, he was there all day. It's only Bradbury's third, though. Bradbury comes up with a steal, finds Thomas. Thomas throws it away. Rushlow with it now. Maybe got away a couple of out. Jace Rushlow is going to take it the other way. Smartly takes it out, get their offense set up. They're going to take some time off the clock here. Finds Pierce. Pierce goes up. Nice strong take there by Pierce. Drew the foul on Carvel. Pierce is going to get two attempts from the free throw line. I don't know. He barely even touched him. <laughs> <laughs> I might disagree, but, you know, what do I know? If they didn't call that one, yeah. we might have had a ride on our hands. That I can't agree with. That I do know. <laughs> and rightfully so. Pierce gets his first to fall. Big time free throw there. The Warriors take a five point lead with two minutes and four seconds left in this fourth quarter. Yeah, we're getting down to uh, delay and force and foul territory here. Pierce misses the second rebound by Carvel. He's going to do a quick push himself. Finds Kingsbury. Gets it up. Missed this tie up there. Shane with the rebound. Gets in the hands of Rushlow. 
Rushlow is fouled by Pryor. He's gonna do one and one from the line as that was the seventh, soon to be eighth team foul on Central Rooster. And that's who you want at the line if you're Fort Kent. Announcer's jinx is in full effect. <laughs> That's pretty common when you and I do the game. That's why I'm trying not to make those comments tonight. Well, we're commentators. Yeah, so yeah, it's kinda hard say, not yeah, to yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of why we're here. Yep. Instead of having dead air all the time, although it still would be an exciting game regardless. Bradbury's going to pick up the foul there. Delisle's going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, so that third one that he got is actually going to be big because now that being his fourth, he's going to have to avoid being the one to pick up any fouls that they're trying to give to force free throws at this point. We have 129 left on the game clock, 54 to 49 in favor of the Warriors. The Lyles shot is off the mark. Bradbury with the rebound. Pierce putting pressure. Some contact there. Good defense. DeShane gets a hand in the passing lane to prevent that nice cut from Kingsbury. Really good job of recovering on that weak side, preventing the layup. Bradbury with it. He puts up the three from the wing off the mark. Rushlow with the rebound. Goes up to get that one. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of shots short now. This has been a hotly contested game here for its entirety, so and not a ton of bench depth being used. So some tired legs, legs out there. Some tired legs out there. And Bradbury's gonna pick up his fifth foul. That's a big loss for the Panthers. Yeah, he didn't really need to get one there. There's still time where he, they could have afforded to be picky about who picked it up. I'm not sure if he meant to, just kind of reached in and really without thinking got his disqualifying fifth. Nicholas is going to check into the game for the Panthers. Pierce going to get two from the line as the Warriors are in double bonus. He's a terrible free throw shooter, and this is not who they want at the line. Let's see if that works. I'm just not oh, going to yeah, say anything. Say, yeah. I'm just not going to we'll, say we'll anything. We'll let the dead air rule on this one here. <laughs> I think it's when you try to jinx yeah. it, it does the opposite yeah. effect. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Pierce makes the second one. Nichols is going to take it. Kicks to Thomas. Quick three from Thomas. Out of in and out. Pierce with the rebound, he's gonna take it. Kicks up to Delisle, goes the other way, misses the layup. Nice outlet pass to avoid being fouled there. Scuffle underneath the basket. We got a jump ball called. It is gonna be central basketball. Yeah, that's so hard, because you kind of say anything, but uh, you don't want anything unless it's a layup, and technically that was, but pretty contested. May have, may have been better served to just kind of wheel that out and make them come chase him. Run some more time off the yeah. clock. Central Rustic needs a basket here if we want to continue this kind of stop the clock with the foul kind of game. They got to get something going. Carvel's going to player control foul called there. Parody again took the hit, got the charge. We're going the other way. Four yeah. to three seconds left in this one. Yeah, well done. Saw Carvel coming down the lane 100 miles an hour and he kicked it out, but couldn't just stop his momentum on the dime. Full timeout called by Coach Chad Sear. We're going to take a minute break and get back to you on WHOU. Outfit your vehicle for tough jobs with commercial truck body and accessories at Maine Equipment in Herman, Maine. At Maine Equipment Company, we sell and install truck bodies, lift systems, garbage removal applications, and snow and sand spreading applications. Storage boxes and bed liners is also available. Call us at 207-848-5738. Dump bodies, hook lift hoists, truck bodies, sand and salt spreaders, rubbish packers. The right fit for your truck. The premier company in the state of Maine. Maine Equipment Company. Lincoln Power. Power Sports is the leading ATV, snowmobile parts, accessories, and outdoor equipment dealer in Lincoln. Whether you're looking for the latest new products from BRP, Can-Am, Skidoo, or today's best clothing and accessories, we've got it. It's no wonder riders and customers trust Lincoln Power Sports for ATV and snowmobile service and installation of parts and accessories. Stop by our store or browse our extensive online catalog from anywhere in the world. Call 207-794-8100. We would love to hear from you.
43.6 seconds left in this one. Warriors up 55 to 49. Steven Pierce gonna inbound underneath the basket, gets to Delisle. And a reach in foul there by Thomas. They're trying to foul, stop the clock, and extend this game as best as they can. Austin Delisle is gonna get two from the line. First one off the front of the rim for Delisle. A lot of shots short. He puts up his second from the line and the second one is off the back of the rim. Evan DeShane got the rebound and they're gonna foul him. They're gonna put him on the line. Let's see if he can capitalize on these free throw attempts. Now Delisle actually had all nine of his points in the first quarter. The foul trouble kinda, kinda broke up his rhythm since then. Evan DeShane's is off the back of the rim as well. We've had opportunities to put this away, but leaving that door just open for such a realistic, maybe hit a couple threes here and keep it interesting. He gets a second to fall. Central's gonna push the ball quick up. They need a basket here if they want this game to, oh, and a nice steal there from Delisle. He's gonna take it, make this one. That's a left you take. He was able to get over to the right-hand side and get it really uncontested, so. It was a high pass. DeShane tried to deflect it. Ended up going off the fingertips of Kingsbury. We got a nine-point lead with about 24.9 seconds left in this game. The Panthers are going to pull their press back a little bit. Don't believe they're going to foul here. No, that Probably, little sequence yeah. just about finished it. Nope. Kingsbury, as I say that, Kingsbury did get the foul on parity. He's going to go to the line. Two free throws coming up from Parity. The fans are on their feet for this one, especially the student section behind me. Parity gets his first to fall. Puts up the second and gets the second foul. We have an 11 point lead now for the Warriors with 18 seconds left. I might feel safe to say this one's over. But as I say that, Nicholas hit a big three. I think they covered the spread though with that one. Yep. Though. And Nicholas fouls Delisle. We got 8.1 left on the clock. Delisle's gonna go to the line now for two. His off the front of the rim. Gets his second one was waved off. He crossed the line early. Thought we might have had the second one in. Oh, man. We did not. Nicholas puts up another running three and gets that one to fall. We have a timeout. From Central Rustic, 30 second timeout. Actually, that's going to be a full timeout. We're going to take a minute break. 4.4 left. We'll get back to you. Catan Valley Health Center, or KVHC, is a network of six community health centers dedicated to providing affordable, comprehensive, and high quality care to people of all ages and incomes. We accept all patients and insurances, including those who are uninsured or on main care. Our committed patient care team is here for you offering an extensive range of services to provide you with quality health care. We're creating healthy communities starting with you. Call or visit our website today. Pioneer Fiber to the Home is now available in Holton, Sherman, Stacyville, Callis, and Baileyville. Streaming live events in high definition like high school basketball is best viewed with the most stable and fastest connections. Pioneer Broadband delivers state-of-the-art fiber directly into your home to handle all of your most demanding internet needs. Don't get left behind with slower technology. Get the fiber you need. Pioneer Broadband. Dribble out of it. No fouls there. And that's our final score, folks. We have a final score of 60 to 55. Fort Kent takes it over Central Rissa. Very tightly con contested game here.
This was a fun one to call. I'm going to kick it up. Absolutely. So we're here at our post-game show brought to you by Pat's Pizza. Dom's going to head over to talk to one of our players. Again, folks, this was a very tightly contested game from two of the top teams in Class C, North Boys Basketball. I believe Dom is going to talk with our player of the game, who was Jace Rushlow, after a big performance tonight and a big-time performance out in Southern Rustic on this weekend on Saturday. So, Dom, I'm going to kick it over to you and Jace. I'm here with our post-game guest and the newest member of Fort Kent Community High School's 1,000-point club, Jace Rochelo. Jace, first of all, uh, congratulations on the honor. Uh, if you look up at the list here of 1,000-point scores in the school, you join quite a, quite a list here. Um, what has that meant to you personally? Uh, well, ever since, like, third grade and I knew about the 1,000 points list, I uh, wanted to get on that list. I know, like... Um, just like get on that list means you're one of the better players in class C and it was just a goal of mine and I had the, I had the best teammates uh, my teammates hit me the coaching staff last year and the years previous and this year did a really great job and trusted me in my offense and it was a, honestly a great honor that I got on the list absolutely uh, now tonight well, a little slower start but boy that third quarter you came out firing was that something that you kind of improved yourself personally upon or is that more of a strategic thing that was an adjustment that was made to get you some more looks in the second half uh, well, yeah, I guess it's a little uh, strategic because uh, they started face guarding me in the first half, so we had a plan to get me open, which was set in uh, like a double screen and stuff to get me open. Um, but also, it's just uh, we come out better in our second half. We're a little slow on the start, and then our second half, we really pick up. Awesome. Well, a big win for you guys, and we're looking forward to the return leg down there. Good points for you. Congrats, buddy. Thank you, Dom, and thank you, Jace. We're going to read off a couple end-of-game stats for you now as Dom joins me back at the table. Dom, good work hustling back over. What do we got? Or are we going to kick it to Jake first? I'll have Jake give us our secondary stats while I total up the points here. All right, and once more, this is Jake Hebert, our third member of our team and stats guy. Question I've got. Seven rebounds, two assists, and three steals. Evan DeShane got 11 rebounds, two steals. Assist. Austin Delio got five rebounds, two assists, three steals. And for the CHF, Josh Thomas got three rebounds, two assists, two steals. Braden Bradbury got 11 rebounds, three assists, two steals, and a block. And Hayden Kingsbury got seven rebounds and one assist. Excellent, Jake. And for point totals for the victorious uh, Fort Kent Warriors, at Jace Rochelot with 16. Uh, Stephen Pierce leading the way with 19. He's been coming along uh, very strongly here as of late. Eden Parody with 8. Evan DeShane with 4. And Austin Delia with 11. For the Central Rustic Panthers, uh, Josh Thomas with 9. Stetson Nicholas with 8. Braden Badbury held to 10. Ethan, Pradber, uh, Ethan Pryor rather, with nine, and Hayden Kingsbury leading the way with 15. Alrighty, we want to thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you to our listeners for watching the WHOU live stream. This has been a fun one to call. Thank you again, and we'll catch you next time.